Oh, hi there. Oh, excuse me, I'm a little thirsty. Well, now I feel better. Have you ever wondered why you have such a need for water? Well, water is critical to every living organism on this planet. And in this lesson, we'll get a brief overview of some of the life-giving properties of water. And then towards the end, we'll also talk about um, the ionization properties of water and how that's critical to your understanding of acids and bases. So let's first review some of the properties of the water molecule. And if you haven't yet watched the lesson on the chemistry background needed for biology, you should review this one first before continuing on. So water is composed of a single oxygen and two hydrogens. And with these hydrogens, the oxygen forms polar covalent bonds. Polar means that there's an unequal sharing of the electrons. Oxygen has a stronger pull on electrons. It strongly attracts them closer to itself. So the pair of electrons that is being shared in each of the polar covalent bonds, that those pairs are found closer to the oxygen making the oxygen have a slightly ne negative charge because it has the negatively charged electrons close to itself. And the hydrogens have a slight positive charge because the electrons are further away from them. The fact that water has this slight polarity, this uneven distribution of charge, means that it can interact with other polar molecules. So here you see a water molecule where the hydrogen is attracted to the negative charge on the oxygen of another water molecule. This association between the slightly negative oxygen and the slightly positive hydrogen is called a hydrogen bond. And so a one water molecule can form up to four different hydrogen bonds with four different water molecules. Now, the fact that water has this polarity and this ability to form hydrogen bonds has implications for how it interacts with other molecules. And we can basically take other molecules and separate all of them into two classes based on whether or not they can interact with water. So if they can interact with water, the molecules are called hydrophilic. Hydro for water, Philic for loving, this is a water-loving molecule. And when I say water-loving, I mean that it can interact with water, it can dissolve in water. An example is sugar. And hopefully you already realize that it is possible to dissolve sugar in a cup of water, right? And <clears throat> any molecule that is polar is one that is hydrophilic. So all other polar molecules are able to dissolve in water. Hydrophobic molecules are ones that are water-fearing. Phobic means to fear, so these fear water. Now, they're not literally afraid of water. No, it just means that these molecules cannot interact with water. They can't dissolve in water. An example is oil. And if you've ever tried to make a dressing out of vinegar and oil, you probably realize that the oil has a really difficult time mixing with the aqueous vinegar. So hydrophobic molecules are all nonpolar. Any nonpolar molecule cannot interact with water because it doesn't have the ability to form hydrogen bonds with water. So now we're ready to talk about water's life-giving properties. Without the existence of water on this planet, life would simply not be possible. So let's review why. The first is that ice has the ability to float on water. Usually, solid substances are more dense than liquids and will sink but ice does not. Why? It has to do with the hydrogen bonding in liquid water versus ice. This picture illustrates the hydrogen bonding in ice. At the lower temperatures, the water molecules have less kinetic energy and they're not moving around as much. They're not vibrating. And so um, the fact that they're moving less allows them to form the maximum number of four hydrogen bonds with four other water molecules. 
forming these hydrogen bonds locks them into this crystalline structure and creates more space between the water molecules. When there's more space between them, that means the ice is less dense. As opposed to in liquid water, when you warm up water, some of these hydrogen bonds begin to break. And the reason is that the water molecules gain more kinetic energy and they begin to vibrate more. And that breaks some of the hydrogen bonds. They're still there, but they're constantly breaking, reforming, breaking, reforming. And that allows the uh, water molecules in liquid water to move closer together and become more dense. Since ice is less dense, it will float. Now, why is this property important to life? Well, imagine it's winter and the pond begins to freeze over. Ice will form as a thin sheet on top of the pond. Because it's above the liquid water, it actually insulates the liquid from the freezing um, temperature of the air. So the water in the pond that's under the ice will be a little warmer and that allows aquatic organisms like fish to survive the winter. Another property of water is that it changes temperature more slowly than other molecules. And it has to do with the fact that water exhibits high specific heat. Specific heat is the measure of how much heat energy needs to be added to a substance before it changes temperature by one degree Celsius. Water has a high specific heat, meaning that you need to add a lot of energy before you can increase its temperature. And that is because the initial heat energy goes into breaking the hydrogen bonds that hold the water molecules together before the heat energy actually raises the temperature of the water. Now, this property of water is important for both moderating the climate on our planet, as well as for moderating the internal temperature of living organisms. Water also exhibits a property known as cohesion. Cohesion is the attraction that certain molecules have for each other. Water has hydrogen bonding that attracts, it, um, attracts the water molecules together, hence they exhibit cohesion. They don't break apart easily. And you can see an example of cohesion on this little water droplet on the uh, leaf. Um, because the water molecules are attracted to each other, they form this neat little droplet. You can also see it in this example of the water strider being able to walk on water. Because water molecules have cohesion, it gives the surface of the water surface tension. The surface tension means that the water does not break easily. The surface doesn't break easily, hence this bug can just walk on water. Cohesion is also critical for the plant's ability to be able to transport water. Because of a cohesion, water can actually travel up capillary tubes, these thin tubes. Um, the thinner the tube, the more easily the water travels up because it forms this nice column of water because of its cohesion. And that is how water can actually get up even this very tall tree, this um, giant sequoia tree. Just think about how far the water has to travel. Here's the height of a person and here's the tree. The water travels all the way from the roots to the very tip of this tree. And it's because water's evaporating through the leaves and the evaporation pulls the water up as a single column and it can form that single column because of hydrogen bonding. And the other property of water is that it is a good solvent. It can dissolve other substances easily. So here is um, sodium ion, which would be the solute, the substance that is being dissolved, and water that's doing the dissolving is the solvent. Because of water's polarity, it can form what's called spheres of hydration around the solute. Here the sodium ion is, has a positive charge and the slight negative charge on the oxygens of all these water molecules will be attracted to that positive charge and the water molecules will surround the ion forming the sphere of hydration. That separates the sodium ion from any of the other sodium ions found in say a beaker of water and because the different sodium ions are separated from each other they dissolve easily in the water. So let's summarize all of water's life-giving properties. 
ice is less dense than water, which can protect organisms that live in the water during the winter. Water changes temperature slowly, which moderates the internal temperature of organisms. Water exhibits cohesion, which gives it surface tension that allows certain insects like the water strider to walk on water, as well as allowing plants to um, transport water even to great heights. And lastly, water is an excellent solvent, meaning that various molecules can dissolve in water easily, and all of these molecules are important to all of the biochemical reactions that take place in living cells.